First of all, thank you so much, Angelina, for this beautiful song and for sharing with us your wonderful, shining talent. Thank you so much. Your Royal Highness, ministers, excellencies, dear friends, a very good morning to you all. Welcome to Lillestrøm. Welcome to Nord Shipping 2017. And welcome to this opening conference called Catalyst for Change. Welcome to a week where you, can attend, where you can attend more than 100 conferences, workshops, and side events. A week where you can visit more than 1,000 exhibitors in the adjacent halls, and a week where you can at least enjoy the company of 35,000 fellow nor shipping participants. I hope this will be a week of inspiration, of new business opportunities explored, and new friendships forged. A big thanks to large staff of people who have now been working around the clock for a long time to make this event possible. Now, since we last met here two years ago, most segments of this industry have endured harsh and challenging market conditions. A toxic combination of sluggish economic growth, collapsed oil prices, low commodity prices, and also excessive overcapacity has continued to hit hard on this industry. And Adding to the commercial challenges is a world which also poses its concerns of its own. Nationalism and protectionism is on the rise. We see that globalization and protectionism and uh, international cooperation is uh, losing out. We see that trade relative to economic growth has declined. We see a high number of people fleeing wars and uh, poverty, and we see a shifting geopolitical landscape. Now, all of this obviously has important consequences for this industry. But at the same time, for an industry so vital to global progress and prosperity, there are also important and large business opportunities opening up. And these topics will be dealt with in the following sections of this uh, conference. But let me allow to offer you a 30,000 feet perspective on what we consider to be some of the major uncertainties, some of the major trends, and also, of course, some of the uh, maritime business opportunities as we go forward. I'll start in the darkest corner with the uncertainties. And one of them is, of course, sluggish economic growth. True, there are encouraging signs of stronger growth, both in Europe and in the US, and China remains an impressive performer. And further, they are inducing more economic growth with their One Road, One Belt project. But still, the Brexit process, the America First policy, and the financial gearing of the Chinese economy carries inherent risks. Also, in many Western European countries, social and political tensions are increasing. The populist and radical wings of the political spectrum are gaining force, and also we see that in some countries, the liberal uh, democratic system itself is under increasing pressure. Thirdly, but not least, there are changes in the geopolitical balance of power. EU appears to have suspended its foreign policy ambitions. Russia continues to be assertive in its own neighborhood. China is converting its formidable economic fo weight into increased regional and geopolitical influence. And the US has lost its traditional credibility as a guarantor of world peace and, uh, and uh, stability. Now, fortunately, we're not only surrounded by uncertainties and risks. The global trends on demography, technology, and sustainability offer some pretty clear directions of what is lying ahead of us. 
On demography, we are becoming more people on this globe, more people are living in cities, and we see a massive shift in the economic, demographic, and political centers of gravity from the Western worlds towards the South and the East. Also, technological changes and advances are affecting every corner of our societies, our industries, and our social lives. Automation, artificial intelligence, big data, and the Internet of Things are fundamentally challenging the traditional business models and the relationship between man and machine. And this, in turn, is affecting the global economic growth model and the global pattern of trade and investments. Secondly, or thirdly, the need for environmental sustainability in itself represents a major trend. To me, it's quite obvious. We cannot continue to overheat the atmosphere, to overconsume on scarce resources, and to extensively degrade the environment. We are in need of a global detox and a generational clean-up. And I happen to believe that if you want to develop a sustainable business, you have to contribute to a sustainable society. If you have long-term ambitions for your company, you have to stay on the right side of history. I also firmly believe that this industry is key to meeting some of the most pressing challenges faced by the world today. The oceans make up 70% of the surface of the Earth and maybe as much as 90% of the planet's resource potential because they are so deep. The oceans are our most important global common. Last month, I had the pleasure of handing over to His Royal Highness, Krampus Hakon, a new report commissioned by the Norwegian Ship Owners Association, uh, produced by DNVGL, which is outlining how the shipping industry can contribute to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And next week, I shall have the honor and privilege to go to New York and present this report to the UN Ocean Conference. And I think that many of you would be surprised to learn how important the oceans are, how important this industry is for the global community going forward. And these contributions to a sustainable global community also represent major business opportunities for the maritime industry. The first one, obviously, is in green logistics. Even with today's moderate growth rates, demand for shipping services is set to double within the next couple of decades. And adding to this, we expect to see a policy-induced model shift from land to sea because in regional transportation, because shipping is by far the most energy-efficient mode of transporting large quantities of goods over long distances. And both for intercontinental and regional shipping, we'll be seeing more green ships traveling the blue oceans. We'll be seeing further improvements and innovations in hull, design, fuel, propulsion, vessel operation and fleet management, with the aim of improving energy efficiency and reducing harmful emissions to air and sea. And in this context, I would like to commend the International Chamber of Shipping, the ICS, for recently adopting a position whereby it states its ambition to be in line with the Paris Agreement. That's an important step forward. The second opportunity area is offshore energy. We believe that offshore oil and gas will be an important source of energy to the world for many years to come, but will the major growth, the most important growth in relative terms, will be in renewable energy, from winds in particular, but also from waves, currents, and tidal water. And thirdly, but not least, extraction of ocean-based resources. Food is but one example. For a growing world population, we need to produce more food, healthier food, 
and food with a lighter environmental footprint. We also expect to see a growth in seabed mining for rare earth minerals and metals that are used in modern appliances like smartphones, laptops, flat screens and electric vehicles. In all of these three areas, green logistics, offshore energy and ocean resources, we see exciting business opportunities. In all of these areas, we believe that this industry can contribute decisively to a sustainable world, and that this industry will indeed act as a catalyst for change. So, this is why, in spite of the very difficult times endured by many maritime companies today, we are both proud of this industry and confident in its future. So again, welcome to North Shipping 2017. Welcome to this opening conference. I hope that you will enjoy both. Thank you so much.